You want to come and come and gather, <laughs> gather, so I can see you and I can see your reactions and pray for you. And... Testing times. Uh, this is from our series, which is the last in the series of following the leader, following Jesus. I mean, there's, as we've said before, there's only one world leader worth following, and that's Jesus. Amen. 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 And uh, I don't know how many followers we've got in this room, but we're following Jesus. Mm. And all followers listening to my voice, or even watching on Facebook these days. <laughs> oh dear. So, as we followed Jesus last time, we saw that Jesus came and was baptised by John, and uh, he didn't need to be baptised, he didn't need to uh, repent of his sins, because he didn't have any sins, but he goes before us and he's baptised by John, and so that's why we follow him, and that's why we want to be baptised, that's why we look back with fondness of our baptism day, and if you can't look forward backwards to your baptism day, it's because you haven't been yet, and if you want to get baptised by full immersion, we'll do it, either in the sea, or we'll hire a tub, and we'll do it right here in this room, so I don't know whether you're baptised, but uh, we, that's the reason I got baptised. I just wanted to follow Jesus. And um, so Jesus is baptised. He comes up out of the water. And so we are baptised. But it's not just about water. It's being immersed in all the will of God. It's not just, um, like we talked about church membership just now. It's not just about, well, I'm a member now. My name's on the roll. That's it. No, no, no. It's about being immersed in all the will of God. It's about uh, saying, yes, God, I want to follow you. Whatever happens, I'm going to follow you. Even through testing times, I'm going to follow you. So after Jesus' baptism, we see that the heavens were opened. I love Mark's rendition. He says that the heavens were torn apart. I love that. And we want to see the heavens torn apart, don't we? We want to see God break through. Who needs a breakthrough in their life? Who needs a breakthrough in their loved one's life? Who needs a breakthrough to, to see in this to see in this town, in this church? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are people in the fellowship right now who are uh, valuing our prayers because they need a breakthrough. There are people who need our support. They need a breakthrough. So the heavens are opened. Then there's the Father's voice. The Holy Spirit comes. And Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit, as we have read just now. Full of the Holy Spirit. And then, consequently, he's led into the wilderness. So we are filled with the Spirit, but we're not filled with the Spirit, so we go to the next conference to get another Come on. filling with the Spirit. Come on. We're not filled with the Spirit, so we get the next thrill. Yes. We're not filled, so we are a consumer and become spiritually overweight and flabby. <laughs> <laughs> We're filled with the Spirit, so we can be led by the Spirit. That's good. That's good. God's led us as a, as a people group, as a church. He's led us to this place, to this building, and this church plant of which you are part. Hallelujah. Led by the Spirit. He's filled with the Spirit, but he's led by the Spirit. But he's led into a difficult situation. He's led into a testing time. How many know? That your faith gets tested. Yeah. Where well, you get saved, you give your life to Jesus, and we've said this in Bible studies or whatever, you know, the sky is blue, the, the grass is green, and everything's amazing. And then it starts, the test of your faith comes. When people get baptized, it's the same thing, it'll be, you'll be tested. 
you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be tested. Testing times. Testing times is normal. See, some people, you know, they, they go, oh, I don't know what's going on. I, I gave to the church. I, I turn up on time. I do all this, and all this is going wrong. Welcome to the real world. Come on, come on. <laughs> Testing times is part of the journey. Hallelujah. Oh dear, I can see the joy on your face as we're preaching this amazing message. <laughs> Testing times. You know, James says, count it all joy. <laughs> you know, I wonder if he really did count it all joy, or whether he had counted it all joy and he had to tell himself, you know what, I'm going to count it all joy. No matter what I go through, I'm counting it all joy. Because God is for me and he's not against me. Hallelujah. That's a reason to have joy in your life. If you know you're saved and you know you're going to heaven and you know you're called of him and he has his hand on your life, then you can have joy no matter what you go through. Hallelujah! <laughs> My goodness me, if I'd preach like that in Kenya, they'd have gone erupt. <laughs> <laughs> can we take this message over to Kenya, you know? <laughs> anyway. Alright. And he's led into the wilderness. And we're instructed to keep in step, walk in the Spirit. For Jesus, it would be a time of fasting, meditation, preparation and prayer. We know the Apostle Paul, you know, on Acts 9, he has this amazing conversion. But actually, for a number of years, God really did sideline Saul, Paul, and prepared him for the great ministry. And we are weeping. The New Testament is, is, is Paul saturated through the letters. This preparation, preparation is very important. It's not just about some people, oh, well, they, some people go to Bible college and they study. No, no, we are all called to prepare our hearts. We're all called to fast and pray. Jesus didn't say, if you fast. He said, when you fast. Yeah, and you might say, well, I don't like fasting. Nor do I. It makes me hungry. <laughs> but I like the results. Come on. And a number of times as a church, we've corporately fasted, and we will again. And every time we've seen a breakthrough, every time, called into preparation, called into walking step, called into prayer. A time of testing. A time... And the enemy might come and test. As it Rick Warren says, the devil tempts, but God will test. The devil will tempt us to walk away. God will test us so we become strong. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm not having the temptation of the devil. I've received the testing of God because I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out stronger in whatever we're going through. The 40 days mirror Israel's 40 years in the wilderness. There is a brilliant connection. How Israel was 40 years in the wilderness and they were tested. And many times they backslid, many times they moaned and groaned, not like you. You are a wonderful people, but they moaned and groaned. I mean, just imagine having three million in your church and they're all moaning. They don't like what happened in the church meeting. Come on, oh. come on. <coughs> anyway, so they, but they failed many times. But when they had come through, eventually they came to that place and into the land of promise. You see, whatever, when we're tested, it's what we do with that testing time will de 
define whether we will go on into the land of promise. You see, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to enter into all the promises. I don't know how long you've been a Christian. I don't know how long you've been a believer. But God has given me many promises. They're all in this book, and they're all mine. Hallelujah. And they're all yours. But we have to enter into it. People say about having a healing, being a healing church and having healing services. Well, why is it so many are sick? Because we're being tested. Because we've been tested to see if we really believe this stuff. You see, it's not enough. You see, the children of Israel went through their testing time. And they got... They came out of Egypt and they went into the wilderness and they went into their testing time. But it was not enough. It was not enough that the children of Israel should come out of Egypt. What had to happen was Egypt had to come out of them. Theologically, we're talking about sanctification. We're talking about being made like him. It doesn't come overnight. Conversion happens in an instant. The dying thief turned to Jesus, and he's received there and then. And that day, he was with Jesus in paradise. Glory! But sanctification, being a vessel unto honour, being a vessel that God can use, ah, that's something different. You see, God, people say, well, why isn't God doing more? Well, God would do more. He's just looking for vessels who will go through the testing time and be prepared and get the Egypt out of them. I don't want Egypt in me. I don't want the old world's standard in, in me. I, and the, it's no good. You know, people say, well, we're in the 21st century. Uh, we see this on the news all the time. But the church must keep up. Keep up with what? A destiny that's going to hell? We're, we're not called to keep up with the world. We're called to set the pace. Come on. But we can't set the pace if the world's in us. We've got to get the world out. And that's why testing times come. That's why whatever comes... It's a test to see if you really, really do believe. Remember that Jesus didn't need to repent to be baptised, and uh, but he goes before us so that we could follow. And Jesus' wilderness experience show us the way we can follow. The desert fathers took this very literally in church history, and they spent sometimes lifetimes in these wilderness experiences. I don't think they got it right, really. To be plonked on a mountain somewhere in the wilderness. Because that in itself becomes an indulgence. Because just to escape that nasty, nasty world. No, we're called to be light. We're called to be salt. We're called to be make a difference in our world. Amen? Mm. But it is right to have times of preparation. And we follow Jesus. In Jesus' tested time, the devil came to him. He comes at his weakest moment while Jesus is hungry. I love the text. It says he fasted for 40 days and Jesus was hungry. How obvious is that? <laughs> Do you, know, you notice that? You read it. And Jesus was hungry. Well, I guess that. You know, I got that bit. I'm usually hungry when I wake up in the morning. That's why it's called break fast, isn't it? But I think, I need something to eat. But the devil comes to him at his weakest moment. Does that sound familiar? You see, some people, they stay away from meeting together. I won't say stay away from church, because we are the church. 
but they stayed away from gathering and worshipping together when they're going through tough times. That's just the time we need. That's just the time we've got to put that stake in the ground and say, you know what, Mr. Devil, you're not having me. I'm going to go, I'm going to worship, I'm going to glorify God. And I'm, well, I don't care what that week looks like, I'm just going to glorify God. I tell you, you'll come out stronger. You'll come out better. You'll come out a different person. Hallelujah. It's a process. And the devil comes to him. Seeking to tempt Jesus to take the easy way out. But on three occasions, Jesus responds. And he says, it is written. I want to tell you something. I, I, well, I, I came across something on, on social media. Some, believe, some Christian minister somewhere was saying that uh, advertising some book that gives an overview of the Old Testament because he said, quote, not many people read the Old Testament nowadays. And I thought, why? <laughs> no wonder we're weak. No wonder we're just all over the place in the West. I'll tell you what, we've got to get into this word. We've got to get the old reading programs out again. Start reading the Bible from cover to cover. Read it through. If it ta you can do it in a year by reading about three or four chapters a day. But you can do it in three years by reading about one chapter a day. You can do it. Tell yourself, I can do it. Get the word in. You might say, well, I don't understand some of these old concepts, Old Testament concepts. Well, that's okay. God does. Just put it in there. You know, when you go to the bank, you put money in. And you put your money in a deposit. And at some point or other, you go back to that hole in the wall and you put your card in and you go do, 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 with your number. Yeah? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> but usually nowadays, if I do it, I'm going. <laughs> And I come up, and I, how much do you want? 50 pounds. If there wasn't anything in the deposit. Come on. <coughs> come on. I can't draw anything out. We've got to get the word of God into us, friends. And the word of God will help you through your testing time and my testing time. We need to read the whole book. We need to... Stop separating Old Testament and New Testament. It's God speaking all the way through. Jesus is in Genesis. He's right the way through. It's all about him. He's in type. He's in shadow. He's in form. But he's there. The Old Testament. We see Jesus is, is concealed in the New. He's revealed. But he's there. Get the, get the Bible into you. Get a... You know, you say, well, I don't understand. Well, get, get, get a Mickey Mouse translation. I don't care, but get the Word of God into you. Amen? <laughs> I don't know if there is a Mickey Mouse translation, but I'd like to do one. <laughs> with pictures and illustrations. And, and we need to stand on God's Word. I don't mean that sort of standing. <laughs> I mean, you put the deposit in, and then you say, I really need to stand on that promise now. I really need to draw a claim on that promise. I've had so many testings in my life. So many testings. I guess I'll get a few more for each time. Sometimes it's in the wee small hours. But God wakes me up, and I get up, and I say, you know what? I'm not going to have this. And I start pacing the floor. I'm not having this because I'm your child. I'm your son. And I stand on the Word of God. You say, well, yeah, well, you're the minister. No, no, no. Well, I am the minister. My job is to <coughs> release you into ministry. Amen. That's it. You're the ministers. Then I can go on long holidays. <laughs> <laughs> We need to quote the word of God into our circumstances. So the enemy comes and says, yeah, well, you're not going to come through this. You need to turn and say, oh, yes, I am, because. 
So you, your loved one's never going to be saying, oh yes they are, because. The church isn't going to go and say, oh yes it is, because Jesus said, I will build my church. Learn, learn, get hold of the word of God. That's what Jesus did. See, I used to believe, I, when I first started, I thought, well, Jesus is the Son of God. So he knew it anyway, because he wrote it. But when he was, was as a man, he didn't know it, he had to learn it. He emptied himself of everything other than being the Son of God. He emptied himself. And so he learned the word. He was a good Torah-keeping Jew. He learned the word. He knew the word. Get the word of God into you. Yes, it is written. And after a period of time, we notice that the devil leaves him. That's good, isn't it? The testing time ends. James summarizes this principle when he wrote, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, this is what... Now, I believe in spiritual warfare, right? I do. I believe spiritual warfare is absolutely vital and necessary. But this is how some people do spiritual warfare. They go, right, I'm resisting the devil, I'm resisting the devil, and they're casting demons out of all sorts of things. Anything that moves, they'll cast demons out of. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. No wonder why nothing's happening. It doesn't work like that. Because the principle is James 4, 7 says, submit to God first. Hmm. If I'm not submitted to God, the devil will just go, ha, who are you? And they did that in the Bible. I have to submit to God. I come under him. And in Christ, I resist the devil and he flees. That's good. So, Jesus returns from this testing time in the power of the Spirit. So I'm going to recap that. He's filled with the Spirit. We need to be filled with the Spirit. He's led by the Spirit. We need to be led by the Spirit. He's empowered by the Spirit. And we need the empowering of the Spirit. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. The modern church often wants to take the easy way. Shortcuts. Blend in. Don't defend anybody. I found that I offend people whether I try to or not. <laughs> so I just get on with doing what I'm doing. You see, we're called to change society, be salt, light, to turn our world upside down or the right way up. So the reality is, we will go through testing times. Jesus himself said this, in the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The Amplified Bible says, you will have tribulation, distress, and suffering. Man, that put that on a, a, an upbeat track, you know. Knock on somebody's door and say, you know, if you want to follow Christ, you're going to have tribulation, suffering. And... <laughs> but it's the reality is, it will happen, and it does happen. Oh, and I doubt if there's anybody in this room, or even in the sound of my voice, that hasn't gone through something, or maybe even going through something. The point is, it's what we do with the test that makes the difference. 